Uh, welcome to the BMG Thermoforming Process Tidbits webinar. To ensure we have a successful event, please stay muted and chat your questions to everyone. There are a group of us monitoring chats to ensure your questions get answered. We hope you enjoy and find value in the time you're taking with us today. For any follow-up concerns, issues, feedback, please feel free to email us at sales at brownmachinegroup.com. First thing I want to note here, guys, is you may see a new brand on our on our uh, logo here of the BMG family brands. We've recently added Axitronics to enhance our product handling capabilities. Now we're going to have a press release coming out on this in the next few days, so watch out for that. This is going to be huge in us. We're, we're from now from point A to point G. We can do pretty much anything, right down to putting your product on a pallet and getting ready to ship out the door. So it's going to be a big one. Watch out for that, guys. Today, I'm going to be your presenter, Alex Strobridge. I started with Brown Machine Group in 2018. Uh, I've got about 10 years as a process engineer in the industry and about two years in the tooling and tryout service here at uh, Brown Machine Group. I had a good mechanical and electrical background and uh, a lot of processing experience with some different resins. So feel free to type in any questions through this. We're going to go through and, uh, and kind of do a little bit and then we'll ask some questions. Uh, I'll answer as many as I can. If we have anything specific, I'll kind of forward you over to our email group so we can get somebody online just to help you specifically. This is our Back to the Basics Part 1 webinar. In this presentation, we'll be starting at the basics of the former to help answer some of the questions you may have. Use the comment message window to ask questions throughout this presentation. Provide us with feedback so we can provide the best possible service. Please chat or email us your feedback at sales at brownmachinegroup.com. Ask for additional information on BMG's service offering to receive a call from one of our trained professionals. They'd be happy to show your company our easy to follow programs, including, but not limited to, on-site training and PM, remote services, stocking, and more. Let BMG work with you to keep your operation efficient. Now, this is big stuff, guys. We have some great training programs out there. Our PM and training is huge. Um, it's, you're seeing just a touch of it here uh, with this webinar, but we have some uh, fantastic stuff. Our PM packages are giant blow up 3D uh, uh, points of, of where your machine is, what we're checking, when we're checking it, uh, along with these uh, hourly, daily shift PM checks of where you're going to check, what you're going to check. So it really carries you through on just going point by point to, uh, to dealing with this stuff. Today, I want to start with the in-feed and pierce wheels, okay? This is back to the basics, so we really want to start at the beginning. First, we're going to start with our upper pan. Now, our upper pan is designed just to keep that sheet as flat as possible. We want to keep it flat and spread out uh, so it can go into those pin chains evenly. Uh, we suggest that this upper pan stay about an eighth inch above your sheet, and that's just to make sure that it can still move through nice and freely, but if it starts to buckle or bow, we have a little tension there to push it back down. Some of these swing, some of them are fixed, some of them are adjustable. It depends on the type of machine that you have. Next, we have the outer guides. The outer guides are gonna make sure that that plastic is going straight into your pin chain. Now, this is really important that you uh, line these up about 16 inch of a play on each side and they have to be parallel. Most of them are gonna have an adjustment front or back of each side. So you can get them off of the chain. If you do this, you're going to try to run that sheet off to one side or the other. So really want to square these up and make sure that they're running straight into your pin chains. Next to the, the outer guides here, we're going to have the preheaters. Now, not all machines have preheaters, but the majority of them do. Now, these preheaters are just designed to heat the plastic enough to make it, uh, to make it soft and pliable, not, not to the point where you can kind of squeeze with your hands or or form it the way you want to. But just so as that pick chain enters through the sheet, it pushes up nice, even chads. Those chads are those little plastic spikes you'll see that the pin chain pokes a hole through. And we want those nice and clean so they have a nice solid base to them. And that's gonna prevent you from chipping off the chads and having them end up in your product or shipping off to your customers or having a mess on the floor, maybe even making a slip hazard. Next, we got the pierce wheels. Then this whole system, 
other than keeping your sheet nice and straight, the pierce wheels are gonna be the biggest part of, of getting your stuff set in right. We wanna make sure that the pierce wheels are pushing that sheet all the way down onto the pick chain. Okay, we don't want pressure on the pick chain, but we want it nice and to the bottom. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna make sure that that sheet can go through your, your chain rail and not be bound up on your, on your upper guide or your cooling tube. And it's also gonna make sure that you get a nice solid grab on that sheet so when you're pulling it through there, it's not tipping on the chain. If your sheet is high on the chain, it's gonna tip back and it's gonna tip in. And that's gonna cause a lot of stress on your chain, on your saddle or your, your guide bar. Um, and it's gonna cause things to wear out a lot faster. Next, we wanna be checking the rail and tool alignment. The rails need to start parallel to the mold. There needs to be three eighths to a half an inch per side of the rails in the mold. So we wanna get pretty close to that and we wanna make sure that it's even all the way around. If the rails are too close to the mold, damage to the mold and chain rails may occur. We, we spend a lot of focus on, on this topic when we're out at customers or helping out. We see a lot of issues and we're gonna hit on this again later in the presentation with some of our shot to shot misalignment. Um, but we really want to focus on this. So if you have any questions on this, please comment and type us up a message and we can ask. Setting height and temperature of the cooling tubes. Cooling tubes need to be set to the material plus 20 to 30 thousandths. A lot of materials are going to be thinner than 20 to 30 thousandths. So what we typically suggest is that for any materials that are thinner than 30 thousandths, Cut two pieces of material about an inch wide, set them on top of each other, and go in between your pick chains and set your cooling tube so it touches the other plastic. Just a slight amount of tension. We just want to feel like it's a good fit in there. We don't want to feel like it's loose and able to play, and we don't want to feel like it's going to drag on the plastic. We want a nice area for that sheet to flow through. Um, if your material is over 30 thousandths, we don't want to, we don't want to put a big gap on top of a large material. So if it's over 30 thousandths, do the material plus 20 to 30 thousandths clearance on top so it just can ride through there nice and easy. Now, if the cooling tubes are set too high, it's gonna cause rippling the sheet and it's also gonna cause some webs. Um, that, that sheet's gonna get flowing through there. It's gonna lift up on the pick chain in certain areas. And as you go to mold it, it's gonna fold that sheet over and you're gonna get webs throughout your product. If the cooling tubes are set too low, it'll cause excessive drag and produce dust. I mean, if you've been doing this long enough, you've seen dust on your rails, um, and a lot of it can be produced by either not having your pierce wheels push your, your sheet all the way down on your pick chain, or your cooling tubes just be set in too low. So it's a big thing to watch out for. It's kind of tedious, and if you change material or thickness by quite a bit, you may have to go through and do this, but it's well worth it. It's gonna save you in the long run. If you guys aren't catching any of this or you want me to explain a little bit more, or you have a question, please go ahead and comment in. I'm still not seeing any comments. We want to kind of Q&A through this whole thing here. Next in the rail adjustments, we have stretching of the chain. Side to side chain stretch or wear at an uneven rate can lead to shot to shot alignment and tracking issues. If you replace one chain, you need to replace both chains. Both chains should be replaced as needed. And what we mean by this um, is that the chains, you know, the, you got a sheet pulling here, sheet pulling there, or maybe you have uh, the sheet melding uneven, so you're putting more stress on one side or the other. There's a lot of variables that can, that can stretch these chains at an uneven rate. Uh, another thing we had is uh, some of the older machines we use mechanical tensioners. So you're kind of guessing uh, how hard you're pushing on that chain. Uh, nowadays, we run a pneumatic system with even chain tensioners to keep that consistent. Um, but still, there's issues or um, circumstances that stretch these at an uneven rate. Uh, it's really important to watch your chains. We got some good stuff coming up on chains just a little bit later in this presentation. We've actually developed our own chains, which is huge, and I'll, I'll hit on that a little bit later. The chain tension setup. Chain tension needs to be equal in both chains. If set too loose, it can cause ripples and alignment issues. If set too tight, it can cause excessive wear on the sprockets and wear bars. Now I see a question here, will this presentation be available after the call? We're gonna get this up on our YouTube channel 
and we'll try to get this out to everybody to link to this. We want to make sure that the quality is clear and everything's everything's looking good. But then we will get a link out to you guys and you'll be able to review this. And we're going to have more episodes coming up. So really look for those. And through this, we really want your comments or write some stuff down if you want to comment at the end or email us at our sales at brownmachinegroup.com to give us those comments because we want to kind of cater these uh, to, to benefit you guys as much as possible. Next, we got a little bit on the toggle procedure. Now, there's so much to the toggles going on uh, through our different machines. This is just one procedure that I'm going to share with you guys, and uh, we'll go from there. I see another question here. Is there a dimension where you need to change the chain? Um, if you start to see the chains just get really loose and sloppy, your picks are starting to become missing, and you're pretty sure that you can't get alignment or you're having trim issues, now's a good time to check. Uh, again, later in the presentation, just, just a little later, we're going to show a little bit more on the pin chains and how to check them. So uh, hold your question till there, and I'll kind of go in depth and try to give you more on the chains and when to change them. Here at the toggle setup procedure, follow this procedure to set up the toggles in the top and bottom plat. Jog the plat into its anticipated off-center position. Using a straight edge, place the straight edge across all three toggle arm pins. Adjust the plat and stroke until you have a gap of 30 thousandths between the straight edge and the center toggle pin. After the required gaps are obtained, zero the plat and positions on the HMI. This is going to be different, like I said, for a lot of different machines. Some of the gaps are going to be 10 thousandths, depending on your machine and the tool that you have to check it with. So if you believe yours is something different than this, uh, please get with us at sales at brownmachinegroup.com uh, to, to answer that question. Uh, other ways we do it is we do it off the crank arm on the side of the gearbox with a level. Uh, it's just the type of machine that you may have. I see another question here, does Brown offer different grades of chains? I have a whole slide on that. We're going to go through it in depth. Just hold that to a little bit later and we'll really get into it. Next, we're going to have a little bit of troubleshooting. Now, you're going to see some repeat topics through this, um, but it's just more in depth because all this stuff is really important. So this is going to tell you why and a lot of it avoids to a uh, shot to shot misalignment. Now this, is, this slide is tr uh, troubleshooting shot to shot misalignment. Make sure the cooling tube heights are set to twice the material thickness. Do not exceed 20 to 30 thousandths. This is accomplished with a gauge between the top of the chain and the cooling tube. So again, you can take the chains, and this is a pick and this is a pick, and the gap in between them, cut the material about that thick. Two pieces of material, so one on top of the other. Run it in there and then adjust your cooling down, tube down to it, just so it's, it's got a little bit of tension. It slides through there nice and easy, so there's no extra space. And that'll usually do it, unless you have really thick material. And then use some feeler gauges. The thickness of your material, plus 20 to 30 thousandths, will allow that material to go through uh, the chain process without any hiccups. Set the pierce wheels at the in feed of the chain rail so the sheet is being pushed all the way down onto the pin. We talked about this earlier, and this is a huge, huge issue. We see it all over the place. Even with people that have been doing this a long time, uh, pierce wheels just aren't something people usually think about. They set it and forget it. It's really important to keep an eye on this and make sure that you're doing it the right way. The pierce wheel needs to push that sheet all the way down onto the pick chain. It's a huge, huge factor for stretching your chains, wearing them out too fast, your wear bars, your index motors. It's just big on everything. You may notice every once in a while, I'm kind of looking down. I might pause. I'm trying to read these comments uh, and try to get them answered as fast as I can. So if you see me trying to catch up here and there, uh, excuse me. Keep the distance from the edge of your tool to the chain down to a maximum of a half an inch per side. Always watch the clearance between the chain rail adjuster bolt head and the side of the, the form tool. This is a large hex headed bolt that has been machined out. Um, this is a big one. We see a lot of differences. Some thicker materials that are, are, are forgiving, uh, you might be able to go wider. We see a lot of, a lot of uh, customers do that with some of uh, their products that aren't quite as, as uh, tolerant based as, as others. Um, but if you have you know, a sh high shrink value material uh, with a, a, a large, a lot of cavities and you're trying to trim consistently, 
the gap between your chain rail and your tool is imperative. You really want to lower that as much as we can without causing damage to your tool. Next here we have start with the chain rails parallel to the form tool. Each side has three eighths to a half an inch clearance on the outside of the form tool to the chain rail. Again, that's checking for parallel. We really want to make sure that all this stuff's parallel and your sheets going through the form or going through your tool as straight as possible. The chain rails need to be set up parallel from the form station stabilizer to the exit end of the machine. Excuse me. If V is needed, it should be done from the in feet of the machine to the form station stabilizer rod. This will reduce sag. The rails must be set parallel from form station to the exit end of the machine. What this means is that the in feed by the pierce wheels, we're going to bring the rails in and they're going to get wider as they come to your mold. Once they get to your mold, there's two more rail adjuster spots. Okay, These are going to be your solid points prior to going into the mold that you want your sheet to go from straight there to the exit end of your machine. So you want to V from the pierce wheels out to your mold and then straight from there to the exit end of the machine. Chains sometimes stretch or wear. To check this, you must remove both chains from the rails. Lay the chain on the floor and place, two, the, two, place the fins facing each other. Make sure the chains are pulled tightly equally and recommend that if one chain is stretched, both chains are replaced. You're gonna lay that pin chain on the floor, take, face the pins towards each other, pull them both so they're nice and straight, and you're gonna watch to make sure that those pins aren't doing this, aren't getting off. Once they start getting off, they'll keep going, and one chain will be stretched more than the other. If this happens, you really want to replace both chains. Another way to do this is you can go to the bottom of the pick and find the pin on the roller chain. That's where the links are connected together. Now go from that pin, 60 to 80 links away, and measure to that pin. Take that measurement and check it on the other side doing the same thing. Now if those measurements are different, that's going to increase throughout the chain because 60 links isn't the whole chain. So if, if those measurements are off an eighth inch to a quarter inch, it's a good indication, hey, let's grab these chains, pull them off of here, put them on the floor, and check them for stretch, because I believe they are. Next, we have the exit pan. Oh, sorry. Next, we have the stripper plate. The stripper plate should not extend below the sheet line when stroked. It should stroke as the platen is retracted. What we mean by this is, we want that mold to take off and the sheet, the, the stripper plate to almost appear as it's staying still. So it's going to hold that sheet in place and allow those cavities to start evacuating, uh, allow the sheet to start evacuating those cavities. And once it's at the end of its stroke, then the stripper comes up with the mold. Okay, just like this. What we don't like to see is the mold and stripper come up and then the stripper plate fire. That's going to allow your sheet to bow up. And if you have a lot of cavities or a difficult to eject part, uh, they can it can be hard to strip it out of the mold. Now, keeping it nice and flat the entire time will allow you to open your mold less and uh, increase your cycle times and everything. Next, we have the exit pan. Between the rails and after the tool should be set at sheet line. The pan should be set so the sheet is not able to sag when indexing out of the mold. We see problems with this exit pan a lot of times uh, with some thinner materials uh, where they're trying to exit out of the machine, their extra pan is lowered because some people have problems starting up their machine or their sheets really sag in the beginning and it's catching that pan. So they'll keep dropping it and dropping it until that sheet doesn't catch the pan. What this can cause is that sheet comes down and those sprockets on the end grab that sheet and can pull it down. It'll roll it up, it'll bind it up. What we like to see is that pan be at sheet line, you start it, and then it helps it feed off of the off of the pick chain and out of your out of your press. I got a question here from Phil I, I didn't see before. What is the typical V spread distance on a heavier gauge sheet? 
It's going to depend on your different types of material. We recommend that you don't go beyond two inches of V uh, pretty much on anything. Uh, I've seen extreme cases where they, you know, creep past two inches, but typically if you're going past two inches, maybe you need to look at uh, something different. If you're having a, a specific issue or you want to go more in depth on your material or your process to see if there might be some other issues, email us at sales at brownmachinegroup.com. We'll get somebody on there to help you out and figure out the root cause of your issues. Now the sheet orientation here, the sheet orientation can cause problems. To check this, you must emerge a piece of your material six by six into hot cooking oil, 400 degrees, and measure the difference from the cold to the heated material in both index and across index directions. It is recommended on most applications that if the sheet, is, sheet orientation is 10% or less, that's what we like to see, 10% or less. A lot of these you're gonna see more, we see people run successfully with more than 10%, um, but that's that's what we try to recommend. Now, another way to test this is you can get a, a, a baking sheet and some talcum powder or baby powder and put a six by six piece on there and throw it in the oven, 400 degrees, 20, 25 minutes. And that's gonna shrink in the in sheet direction or in flow direction. It's gonna sh uh, shrink down and across sheet direction. It's gonna, sh it's gonna go out. If that's more than 10%, then you may wanna get your other material supplier or ask some further questions if you're having some issues with your sheet orientation. Ensure you have proper cooling in your cooling tubes on the chain rails. A tube that is plugged will overheat and cause problems. Now, this is something we see uh, just like the Pierce wheels. People set it and forget it. They think, oh, water's in there, it should be good. Well, you know, you check the water on your tool, why wouldn't you check it on your cooling tubes or your chain rails? Take the hose off, run some water in the bucket, make sure you have good flow through there. Um, it's not, you don't have a bunch of crud coming out of it um, because this can cause issues. It can cause the rails to warp. Um, it can cause your sheet to overheat. It can cause it to pull out of the pick chains. It can cause some big issues. So just keep some upkeep on those uh, as much as you can. Here, we're gonna get into that chain. We have some great chains, guys. Um, we're doing chains that are lasting longer than everybody else. It's the best stuff on the market. We designed it, we support it, and we can put it on anything. You can put it on a Sencor, a TSL, a Kefil, a Illig, a, a Gobbler. Uh, a, they're amazing, amazing chains. They're lasting longer than our customers uh, before they even get to the wear end point. They're replacing their chains. Ours are just getting broken. They're amazing chains. I'm gonna read just a little bit about it on this slide. BMG worked hand in hand with a German chain manufacturer to design and produce the most durable pin chain on the market. BMG pin chain has been proven on all machine brands and models and thermal forming process. BMG pin chain lasts longer with less stretch, reducing maintenance downtime. BMG stocks many configurations and can provide custom precision match sets specifically for your equipment. If you're looking for a pin chain that is just gonna wow you, uh, we've had customers put these on where they're they're throwing diamond chains away every six months, and these are lasting three years and still running. So these will uh, increase your your consistency, your lifespan, your chain drag you down on on costs because you're just not replacing these as much. If you want some more on this pin chain, please email us at sales at brownmachinegroup.com. We got a lot of good stuff on this, and we'd be happy to answer some questions. Next, we got some improper cooling. Improper cooling in the mold is another big one, okay? This must be caused by the, this may be caused by the tooling getting plugged, trying to run too fast or heat exchanger or chiller with insufficient capacity. Check the web temperature with an IR gun. The temperature variance from front, middle, and back should not exceed five degrees Fahrenheit. No, do this in one spot per shot to ensure the same measurement procedure is followed for each point that you are measuring. What we mean by that is you want to let the mold close, open, index, measure a point. Now measure that same point multiple times. You want to get yourself a data group established. Do that in the front, the middle, and the back. Take the averages of each point, and if they exceed more than five degrees, you probably have an issue with the cooling or your machine's running too fast uh, for the components that you have on it currently. Um, next, we want to check our rails for center. Set the rails parallel with each other with, this, with center stabilizers loose. Attach the center line bar at the infeed and exit ends of the main frame. 
the bar must be placed in a vertical position uh, between the rails with the top of the bar and the sheet line. Here, a little note here, older machines will go off the plat in keyways to get an extender line. So some of our newer machines, we actually put a center line bar in there. They'll go across the frame, they'll have, a, have some teeth in there, you run your string through it to the other end of your machine, and then you can measure. You measure from the pick chain to the string. You go from the other side, the pick chain to the string. You wanna do this right where your rails are being adjusted. That's the solid point on the rail. It's not susceptible to, uh, to be moved out of the position. Um, and we wanna make sure that those are all straight to the string. All these four measurements are the same prior to and after your form station. Uh, the older machines, what it's saying here is they can went off the plat and keyway, which is a great way to do it, whether your machine's new or old. Uh, if your rails are centered with that plat and keyway, with the way that your tool is gonna be uh, in and oriented, that's going to help you run your sheet straight through your mold and give you a lot of success. Next here, it says attach the string from the infeed bar, run the string through the machine and attach the other end to the exit bar. Just like we said with our newer machines, we have the bars that go across, make sure that the tabs are at the sheet line, not down. We want them to be able to measure straight from the chain to the string and attach them at both ends of the machine and run your string through. Measure from the pin chain to the string to ensure the string is placed in the center of the rail. Make sure you check directly over the chain rail adjustment screws. You should have the same measurement on all four adjustment screws to the center line. So again, you wanna take your tape measure and put it around the pick chain and measure to the string, around the pick chain and to the string. So why I keep saying the same, same measurement type, just because everybody understands that measurement type. So if you call and say, this is what I have, They'll understand what you're doing um, and they'll be able to get the same measurements if they come out to try to help you. And next, we have some of our added uh, spare parts and service programs. And these are great. You know, we got critical spares, we got discrete service, just kind of a one and done if you want us in and out of your place uh, without any follow up or questions. Uh, we got preventative maintenance and training, which is huge, guys. We have a fantastic PM. I touched on it at the beginning. Um, our PM program is great, right down to testing your oil to see if there's any metal flake in there. We come in, we evaluate, we do a training. Um, we set you up with the tools for success. We give you all the sheets you need for that month uh, to do your, your uh, daily, your hourly PMs, um, right down to your annual PMs. We also display these on a giant, um, picture of your machine that shows you all the points. It's got a, a CAD drawing and it just shows you everywhere you wanna check, it's color coded. So for day by day, we're gonna check here. For a shift by shift, we're gonna check here. For a annually, we're gonna check here, here, and here. And these things, we make them custom for each machine. So if you want this a program, email us at sales at brownmachinegroup.com. We'd be happy to get you some info on it, go through it in depth. I had a question here, what is the discrete services? That's us coming in and just kind of doing a one-off. Like you, you need a quick service, we're gonna shoot you a PO, or you're gonna shoot us a PO, and uh, we're gonna come out, we're gonna do as you're asked, and uh, we're gonna get out of there. We're not gonna follow up or do anything. It's just, uh, hey, we need this, we need you to come install it, and, and we want you out of there. And that's what we'll do. We got some remote services, not all of our older machines, have the remote services, we do have the capability to upgrade them and get you remote services. And that's huge, guys. We troubleshoot a lot, a lot of customer issues right over the phone. You give us a call. If you're able to get these remote services, we jump on, we look at your uh, a process of what's going on, where your issue is. We try to help you over the phone without giving you that added big expense of getting a service guy out there to fix an issue that may be simple enough uh, that you can do yourself over the phone. What what about this uh, presentation might prompt you guys for more questions. Is there anything you want to go back on? You got some more questions. Now would be a great time to ask them. For anything more extensive, or if you want to go kind of like into a private session with one of our guys, we have some great people on here. Email us at this brown sales at brownmachinegroup.com. They got some great stuff for you. I 
I got a question here. Where can we learn more about the PM programs? You can learn more about them by emailing us at sales at brownmachinegroup.com a little bit later on uh, in these in these series of uh, webinars that we're going to be putting out. We're thinking about doing one just on our PM program. We had a great presentation. We got a great couple of guys that know a lot about it um, and they'd be happy to give you more info on them. So if you want to know right now about these PM programs, email us at the sales at brownmachinegroup.com. We'll get right back with you and we can run through, show you some slides uh, and really get in depth with that uh, PM program. But if you are having any issues or you just want some help or kind of a start uh, into getting your company organized to do a continuous PM that's nice and documentable and it shows you what spare parts that you need, uh, that you get the pick chain um, with it. And like I said, you get free pick chain with this PM program. You get a spare parts package that's all included into it. And we work with you to kind of like customize these PM program. If you got more questions on those, please ask us at sales at brownmachinegroup.com. Anything else, guys? I know this was kind of a basic session. We're kind of start at the beginning. We're going to have more of these series coming out. Uh, we're just trying to kind of cater them to you. You know, through these these trying times, we're not able to get to all customers, whether we're not allowed to travel there or you're not allowed to have us in your plant. So this is our way of trying to give back through this. So please take advantage of us. Ask us as many questions as you can. Um, and if you have some some stuff you want to get in depth, uh, the sales at brownmachinegroup.com is huge. All right, guys. Well, I've really enjoyed having you here. I appreciate the questions that did come in. Uh, I hope to hear more from you at the sales at brownmachinegroup.com. This has been an absolute pleasure. We hope you liked it. Comment below if you like this and you want to see more of this stuff. And let's see what you think. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.